Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today's tutorial is a cutesy top that's heavy on the ruffles with a dash of texture via elegant alpines, slanted ribbing to draw the eyes, and a tank-ish cut, so this is perfect for warm weather. Speaking of, if you're looking for warm weather fits, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of classic and modern crochet tutorials and patterns from bikinis and cover-ups to tank tops and tees, with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 210 grams of yarn. That's 450 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you own any vinyl records. I don't, but I used to go to old record stores all the time and listen to vinyls there. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and will be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. And double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making a chain that reaches from 1 inch underneath our underarm down to right underneath our bust. Now I need a total of 3 inches or 8 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 15. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. So start by inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook. We're going to insert our hook in through there. Then yarn over and gently pull through both of those loops on our hook. So pull through one and pull through that second one. Let's do that again. Into that following chain, insert, yarn over and gently pull through both. That's it. We're going to continue with one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly, otherwise a falling row can be a little too tight to work into. Our first row is complete. Now getting started on the second row, which is going to be another slip stitch row, it's now going to be within the back loops, and we need to do an increase as well. So let's all start with a chain two. That first chain is going to count as a stitch for the falling row, and then chain a second chain, so two in total. That second chain is going to count as our turning chain. Then from here, we're going to flip our work. Then we're going to start by inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook's back loop. So this is my second chain. Insert into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from you. Yarn over and again gently pull through everything on our hook. For our first back loop slip stitch, let's do one more. Into that next stitch's back loop. Insert and pull through everything. Continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. We have just finished up our second row. Now let's get started on our third row, which is going to be another back loop slip stitch row. So let's all chain one, since we're at the end of an even number row, flip our work, and again, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now from here, we're going to basically just repeat these two rows. So at the end of every odd number row, we're going to do our increase. So we're going to chain two, flip our work, start our following even number row into that second chain from our hook's back loop, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We're just going to continue to repeat those two rows until we have an underarm portion that can stretch, and remember to stretch our work as if we're wearing it, that can stretch from mid underarm over to about where you'd like your strap to start, so roughly about mid collarbone. I'll meet you back right after an odd number row so we can get started on our cups right after that. I am back and my underarm is all finished. I have a total of 15 rows. My width is roughly two and a half inches or six centimeters unstretched. And now from here, since we all should have ended along the top or right after an odd number row, we're all going to make a chain for the height that we want our cup to be. So I would suggest to make a chain that ends at about mid chest 
or roughly where your bra cup meets your strap or where a tank top would meet the strap as well. So I just needed about an inch or two centimeters, so I just made a chain five. Now from here, we're going to do a slip stitch row all the way back down. So after we have our chain, we're gonna chain one and flip our work. So into that second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch and we're going to put one slip stitch into every chain. Once we reach the body, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And when we reach the end of the row, we're all going to chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches now. So we have just finished up our first cup row, making our way all the way down. And at the end of the row, we chain one, flipped our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way back up, leaving the last two stitches. Now we're going to do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. So we're gonna insert our hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop. And when we have these three loops on our hook, we're all going to yarn over and gently pull through all three of these loops. And that's pretty much it. From here, we're going to chain one, flip our work, do a back loop slip stitch row all the way down. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and do a back loop slip stitch row, making our way all the way back up, ending the row with a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. Now we're gonna to continue to repeat these two previous rows until we have a portion that can stretch from mid underarm over to the middle of our chest. And I'll meet you back right after an even number row. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up the decrease portion of our cup. I have a total of 31 rows. My width is roughly five inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we're going to do our middle row. So since we all should end along the top, we're all going to chain one, flip our work and just do a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So chain one, and flip. Make your way down with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. But before we do too many stitches, we do wanna make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into the edge of this row so we know where the middle row is. But now that that stitch marker is into place, finish up our middle row. Then to get started on the increase portion of our cup, at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and I'll meet you back at the end of the following row. So our middle row is finished and we have also made our way all the way up with our following back loop slip stitch row. Now from here, we're just going to be increasing into every other row using the same technique that we did for our underarm for the same amount of rows that we did for the decrease portion of our cup, not counting that middle row. So since we're along the top, we're all going to chain two. That first chain is gonna count as a stitch. That second chain is gonna count as our turning chain. Flip our work and then into that second chain from our hooks back loop, insert into there with a slip stitch. Put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch to reach the end of the row. Then when we reach the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way back up again, chain two, and then repeat. I'll meet you guys back once when the second cup portion is all finished up so we can finish up with our underarm. I am back with the second portion of our cup all finished. I now have a total of 48 rows, that's seven inches or 18 centimeters unstretched, and now we're gonna finish up our front panel with our underarm. So first things first, we're all going to need to insert a stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made right before we got started on our cup. So for those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain five. So on this end, from the top, I counted down five stitches and inserted my stitch marker. Now from here, since we should be along the bottom, we're gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. We've made our way all the way up with our first underarm row. And now from here, we're going to start our following row off with a decrease. So since we should all be at the stitch right before our stitch marker, let's all chain one and flip. Now just to do the decrease, it's gonna be the same as the decrease portion of our cup. So finding that first available stitch, insert into that back loop, pull through, next stitch is back loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat these two previous rows. So a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases, and then a back loop slip stitch row that starts with a decrease of two until we have the same amount of rows as our first underarm portion. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. I am back and the entirety of my front panel is all finished. I have a total of 63 rows and my width is roughly nine inches or 23 centimeters unstretched, and I did do a chain up of one and cut right after my last row. Now what we're going to do from here is our back panel and I actually already have mine all finished up so I'm just gonna talk you through it. So the back panel is going to be done pretty similarly to the front panel. So what we're gonna do is start off by making the same chain that we made for the front panel, do the same increases for the same amount of rows. The only difference that the back panel is gonna have is once we make that same chain that we made 
for the front panel, we're going to be doing back loop slip stitch rows with no increases and no decreases working our way across for the same amount of rows that we have from this first row across our chest to this last row right over here. Also making sure to insert your stitch marker into that same middle row that we did for the front panel. But once we have that, we're going to do the same underarm that we did for the front panel. And once we do, I'll meet you back so that we can seam everything together. All right, so now that both our front and back panel are all finished up, the next thing we're gonna do is seam the sides. So we're all gonna start by placing our front panel on top of our back panel, and then we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now we're going to pull our work through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So finding the first stitch into the front panel, we're gonna insert our hook only in through that front loop, inserting your hook into that next available stitch into the back panel, inserting only in through that back loop, then when we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into the back, and pull through all three. Continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left. When we don't, do a chain up of one cut and then repeat on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is start working on these straps. So first things first, we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning the seams that we just did is still along the outside, and then we're gonna take a look at the back. Then we're all going to insert our hook into the middle side row that we have within the back panel, so it should be the same side row that our stitch marker is in, and then we're going to start with single crocheting across the top of our back panel. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure, and then we're going to start by putting one single crochet into every side row. So into the same side row that we just insert our hook into, so into that same middle row, insert with one single crochet. Now let's start by finding our following side row, which is this divot right here. Insert into that top loop with a single crochet, and then into our following side row, which is this raised row, another single crochet. And we're gonna keep doing this till we don't have any more side rows left to work into. All right, so we are back. We've just made our way all the way across our back with our single crochets, and now we're going to make a chain that can reach up and over our shoulder to reach the top corner stitch of the front panel to form our strap. Now I have already made my chain. I made a chain of 45, and that's roughly 10 inches or 25 centimeters. But once we have our chain, let's flip our work over and then we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of the front panel. So when it comes to doing the front panel, we are still gonna put one single crochet into every side row, but how we're gonna connect it is with a single crochet, and that's gonna count as our first single crochet for the front panel. So all we're gonna do is find that first corner stitch, insert with a single crochet, that is our connector, and that also counts as that single crochet for this side row right here. Now let's move on to the following side row, which is this divot for me. Find that top loop and insert with one single crochet. And that's it. We are going to continue with one single crochet into every side row, making our way all the way up to this corner but once we reach our side row right here, which is our middle side row, when we do the single crochet into the top of this row, insert another stitch marker into the top of this stitch. And we wanna make sure that we're inserting a second stitch marker so that this one can still stay in place for when we do our bottom band. All right, so I'm back. I've just finished up single crocheting across the top of my front panel. Now, since we're at the corner, we're going to make the same chain that we made on this side, single crochet into the top corner stitch of the back panel and then single crochet across the top of the back panel. Once we reach our chain space, slip stitch into that chain space and do a chain up of one and cut. I am back, I have finished up my straps and now we're gonna get started on the bottom. We're all gonna start with a single crochet row, so making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, meaning the seam that we did on the side is still along the outside. We're all gonna insert our hook into the last side seam that we have along the bottom and we're going to single crochet. So we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. We're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. So this is my first side row right here. I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook into there, and do one single crochet. This is my following side row. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with another single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna make our way all the way around with our single crochet row. And when we're finished with the row, slip stitch into that chain space. And we wanna make sure that we are inserting our stitch marker into the single crochets that goes into the top of our middle rows within the front and the back panel. 
Now, really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this piece can stretch. So once when you're finished up with a single crochet row, try on your piece. If it's a little too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. All right, so I am back. I have made my way all the way around with my single crochet row, and now we're gonna get started on the detail portion. So what we're all going to want to do first is to insert our stitch marker into any stitch away from our middle stitch marker, and that's going to be the width of our detail. Now this is going to be completely up to you. You can make this as wide or as narrow as you'd like. I wanted for mine to align with the straps that I had, so I just kind of eyeballed it, and I inserted my stitch marker into the 13th stitch away from my middle stitch, and that's not including that middle stitch, because we do need an odd number of stitches from stitch marker to stitch marker. So from this side, I counted out 13, starting with this stitch, insert a stitch marker, same thing over here, and from stitch marker to stitch marker, I have a total of 27 stitches. And we're going to want to insert our stitch markers into the same stitches that we did for the front panel, for the back panel as well. So 13 on either side for my pieces. Now from here, let's flip our work over and we can get started on our alpine stitch detail. So getting started with our alpine stitch detail, we're gonna start with a half double crochet row from stitch marker to stitch marker. So start by inserting your hook into your right stitch marker stitch because we need everything to be faced right side out. We're going to pull through and start with a chain two. There's one, there's two. That chain two does not count as a stitch, we just needed the height. And starting with that same stitch that our chain two is in, insert with one half double crochet. So insert, pull through, pull through all three. Again, yarn over, into that following stitch, pull through, pull through all three, and continue with one half double crochet into every stitch until we reach our left stitch marker stitch. Our half double crochet row is all finished. We're now gonna get started on our following row, which is a single crochet row, so chain one and flip your work. Now put one single crochet into every stitch. We are back. Our single crochet row is all finished up. Now let's get started on our alpine stitch detail. So let's all chain two and flip our work. Getting started on our row three or our first alpine stitch detail row, we're gonna start with a decrease of two half doubles. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, into that next stitch, pull through for a total of four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four. Now every alpine stitch row is going to be worked into our previous odd number row, so since we're working into row three, we're gonna be inserting our hook into our row one. So skipping the first two stitches from our row one, not counting that chain two, here's one, here's two, into that third half double crochet, insert with a front post double crochet, so yarn over, into that third half double crochet from our row one, we're gonna bring our hook in through that gap and underneath the body of that stitch and through the other side. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through. When we have those three loops on our hook, we're all going to pull up tall to get the same height as our decrease of two half doubles. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now the following stitch in our alpine stitch detail is a half double, so yarn over. We are all going to skip that following stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as that stitch, and then into the following, a half double crochet. Let's do that again. Yarn over, preparing for a front post double crochet. We are not gonna work into that following stitch into our row one because that half double crochet counts as that stitch, but into the following, our front post double. So bring your hook down, underneath the body of that stitch and through the other side, pull through. We're gonna pull up tall, pull through two, pull through two, and then yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. Skip that following stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as that stitch, into the following with a half double crochet. Let's do the set of stitches just once more, a little bit faster. So yarn over, preparing for a front post double. Into our next available half double crochet from our previous odd number row, we're gonna insert our hook underneath the body of that stitch, through the other side, pull through, pull up tall, pull through two, pull through two, then yarn over, skip one stitch from our previous row, insert into the next with a half double. Continue on with our front post double and half double crochets, making our way all the way down till we all have three stitches left. So we have made our way all the way down with our alpine stitches and we should all have one, two, three stitches left. The last stitch that we all should have done should have been a half double crochet. Now what we're going to do from here is our last front post double and then our decrease of two to close off this row. So yarn over into that following stitch, 
insert with our front post double, so this is per usual. Then we're going to close it off with a decrease of two half doubles, so yarn over. Making sure to skip one stitch from our previous row into that second to last stitch, insert pull through, into that following stitch, insert pull through for four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four. Now our first alpine stitch row is all finished up. Every even number row is going to be a single crochet row, so let's all chain one, flip our work, and put one single crochet into every stitch. Our row four, or our single crochet row, is all finished up. Now from here it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows until we get the length of the bottom portion that we would like, so let's just get started on the following row together. So let's all chain two and flip our work. Now just like our previous alpine stitch row, we're going to start with a decrease of two half doubles. So yarn over, into that first stitch, pull through, into that next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four. And now from here we're going to do a front post double crochet worked into the third stitch from our previous alpine stitch row. So yarn over. We're going to skip one, which was our decrease from our row three. Our following stitch was a front post double, and then into the next is a half double. It will be a half double crochet for everyone because for our alpine stitch rows, every row stitches will be staggered from the previous row. So into the half double crochet, we're going to insert with a front post double crochet. So pull through, pull up tall, pull through two, pull through two. Now a half double crochet. So yarn over. Skip one stitch from our previous row because it's front post double, counts as that stitch. And then into the next, a half double crochet. Again, yarn over, into that following stitch which is a half double crochet from our previous row, with a front post double. Yarn over, preparing for a half double, skip one stitch from our previous row, and half double crochet into the next. Continue this until we all have three stitches left. We've made our way all the way down and we should all have one, two, Three stitches left, and the last stitch that we all should have done should have been a half double crochet. Now we're going to close it off like our previous row. So yarn over, into the following half double crochet from our previous row, insert with a front post double, so that is per usual. And close off the row with a decrease of two half double crochets. Now that we're at the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and do our single crochet row all the way back down. Like I said, we're going to continue to repeat these two previous rows until we get the length that we'd like for our top to be. And just to let you guys know, this portion is completely up to you. So this portion can end at a complete point, or you can end it wherever you'd like, so that it's nice and blunt along the bottom. But either way, I'll meet you back right after an odd number row, so right after an alpine stitch row. Alright, so we are back. For my alpine stitch detail, I have a total of 19 rows, and that's roughly 5 inches, or 13 centimeters. Now from here we're going to get started on our side panel to fill out the rest. So what we're all going to do, since we all should have ended right after an alpine stitch row, is chain one and flip our work. Now we're all going to start with a single crochet row, and we are going to be alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. And we're all going to start with two single crochets. So into that first side row, which should be our side alpine stitch row, we're going to insert with one, and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. Now our following side row, if you flip it over, is our single crochet row. So just find that top loop and insert with one single crochet. Let's do this again. Into our following side row, which should be a side alpine stitch row. Find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two. Now into our following side row, which is a side single crochet row, find that top loop and insert with one. Continue doing this, making your way all the way down until you reach the base. So our single crochet row is all finished up. We are at the base, now we're going to connect it into the base. So finding that next available stitch, we're going to insert our hook into the base. Our next stitch should be the stitch away from our stitch marker stitch, so I'm just going to insert my hook in through there with a slip stitch, and that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it. Now we're going to work our way up to the following row, which is a back loop slip stitch row. So into that next available stitch into the base, Insert with a slip stitch as well. None of those slip stitches count as a stitch and flip our work. Now working our way down our single crochets, we're going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So making sure we're not working into any of those slip stitches into the base, find the last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop with a slip stitch. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, insert, pull through everything, and that's it. Continue this to reach the end of the row. 
So we are back. We have made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitch row. Now we're gonna get started on our falling row, which is a back loop double crochet row. So since we're along the edge, chain three and flip your work. So we're all gonna start our double crochet row with a decrease of two back loop double crochets. So yarn over. Insert your hook into that first stitch's back loop. Pull through into that second stitch's back loop. Pull through and now we should have one, two, three, four loops on our hook. So yarn over, pull through the first three loops. Then yarn over, pull through the last two loops. That is our decrease of two back loop doubles. Now from here, put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. So we've put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. And now we're going to finish off the row with an increase of two back loop double crochets. So yarn over into that last stitch's back loop insert with two back loop double crochets. So there's our first, and then into that same stitch's back loop, there is our second. Now we're finished up with our double crochet row, so let's all connect it into the base. So we're going to skip the next two available stitches into the base. Here's one, and then here's two. Into that second available stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch. That does not count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it. Now from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows until we reach the stitch marker within the back. So just to get started on the following row, which is a back loop slip stitch row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base and flip our work. From here, find the last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop with a slip stitch, and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the end of the row just to remind you how we're going to do our decrease of two back loop double crochets. Our back loop slip stitch row is finished up, now let's do our falling back loop double crochet row. So chain three and flip our work. And starting off every double crochet row, we're gonna start with a decrease of two back loop doubles. So yarn over into that first stitch's back loop, pull through, second stitch's back loop, pull through for four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. We made our way up with our back loop double crochets into that last stitch, we're all gonna do an increase of two back loop doubles. So yarn over into that last stitch's back loop, insert with one back loop double, and then with a second back loop double. And now just to connect it into the base once more, count up one, count up two, slip stitch into that second stitch into the base, then slip stitch into that following stitch into the base to work our way up to our following slip stitch row, None of those slip stitches count as a stitch. And now repeat our two previous rows and, and I'll meet you guys back once we reach the stitch marker that is along the back panel. Now we may not be working directly into our stitch marker stitch depending on how many stitches we have. So it's completely fine if you have just one stitch right before your stitch marker. But either way, I'll meet you guys back right after a back loop slip stitch row. So I have made my way all the way around to my stitch marker stitch within the back. I am just one stitch away. So now we're gonna get started on our following double crochet row. So our work will be slanted like this, but we're about to try to combat that and make that as even as we can until we reach our middle stitch marker stitch within the back panel. So from here, all we're gonna do is do our double crochet row, but we're gonna be doing double crochets to half double crochets to single crochets to try to make the bottom even out with the top portion. So the amount of stitches that we are going to do for each of the sections that we're going to have is going to be completely up to you. But what I'm going to do is just take the amount of stitches that I have for this last side row, which is 29 for me, and divide that by three. Now, if the number that you have isn't divisible by three, that's completely fine. Just tweak your numbers. Maybe one section or two sections may have a stitch more or less than the other ones, but that's completely fine. So all I'm gonna do is 10 back loop double crochets. Now that I have my back loop double crochets, I'm now gonna be doing 10 back loop half double crochets for mine. Now that I have my 10 back loop half double crochets, I'm just gonna close off this row with one back loop single crochet into the rest of our stitches. And now that we've reached the base, we're gonna be connecting it into the base just a little bit differently. So since the last stitch was a single crochet, it's shorter than a double crochet, so all we're gonna do is slip stitch into that following stitch into the base to close off this row. That slip stitch still doesn't count as a stitch. Now to work our way up to the following row, it is going to be a back loop slip stitch row as well. So just into that following stitch, slip stitch into that next available stitch. So that is per usual. Flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. 
And now that we've made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitch row, from here we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows until we reach our middle stitch marker stitch. Once we do, do a chain up a one and cut, then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the other side. We are back and I have just reached my stitch marker stitch within the back panel. Now from here we're going to do pretty much the same thing on the other side, so let's all flip our work over to look at the front panel. Now the ribbing that we have for the first side of the bottom is not reversible. So it's the same idea, but we're going to want to now insert our hook into that next available stitch into the base and get started with our single crochet row. So I'm going to take this stitch marker out because that's worked into the base. I don't need that anymore. And we're going to start with our single crochet row. So insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and we're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, starting with two. So into that first side row, insert into there with one, and then into that same side row with two. Continue to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, and I'll meet you back at the end of the row. We're at the end of our single crochet row. We're all going to chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And I'll meet you back to show you how we're going to connect it into the base. We've made our way down with our back loop slip stitch row, and now we're going to connect it into the base. So connecting it into the base is going to be just a little bit different than the other side. So connecting our slip stitches into the base, we're going to start by just slip stitching into that next available stitch. Pull through everything. That slip stitch does not count as a stitch. Then to work our way up to our double crochet row, we're going to be slip stitching up the following two stitches because our double crochets are a little bit taller. So there is one. And then into that next available stitch, there's my second slip stitch. Still, none of those slip stitches count as a stitch and flip our work. Now since we're along the top, we're going to start our double crochet row with an increase of two double crochets, so yarn over. Find that first stitch from our previous row and insert into that back loop with two back loop double crochets. So there's one, there's two, and from here put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two stitches. We've put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last two. Now just like the other side, since we're along the bottom, we're going to do a decrease of two back loop double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. Now from here our following row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row, so chain one, flip our work, and now we're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we reach our first stitch marker stitch within the back panel, and that should be the same amount of rows as this portion right over here. Then I'll meet you guys back just to talk you guys through how we're going to even out the back panel and then seam everything together. Alright, so I am back. I have made my way all the way around and I have the same amount of rows as the first portion of the bottom. And now we're going to finish up the back panel with our double crochet rows that get smaller along the top. So we all should have ended right after back loop slip stitch row. So what we're going to do to get started on our following double crochet row is just slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. So insert your hook into that next available stitch and flip our work. Now since we're along the top, we're going to start this following row off with back loop single crochets, then back loop half doubles, and back loop double crochets to finish off the row. And we do want to make sure that we're using the same amount of stitches for each set of stitches that we have. So for those of you that have my numbers, I did a total of 9 back loop single crochets, so I'll be doing 9 back loop single crochets here. Now that I have my back loop singles finished, I'm now going to close off the row with my back loop half double, which for me, my number was 10, so 10 back loop half doubles, and then 10 back loop double crochets for me. Once when you have your half doubles and double crochets finished up, I'll meet you back at the end of the row. So I've just finished up my singles, half doubles, and doubles. Now from here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows. So getting started on our falling back loop slip stitch row, chain one, flip our work, and then repeat. I'll meet you back once we reach our middle stitch marker stitch within the back, but don't do a chain up of one and cut because we can work straight into our seam right after that. Alright, so we are back and we have made our way all the way down to our middle stitch marker stitch. Now we're going to seam it all together. So if you guys ended along the top like me, what we're going to do is slip stitch into that next available stitch, which should be our stitch marker stitch, and then do our outside loop slip stitch seam all the way down. So what we're going to do is slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base and flip our work. Now from here, we're going to do our outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam that we did for the sides. So within the front panel, insert your hook only in through that front loop. Into the back panel, insert your hook only in through that back loop. 
then yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, and pull through everything. And continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our bottom is all seamed up, we're ready to single crochet along our armhole to clean it up. So first things first, let's all make sure their work is flipped right side out, right side up, then we're going to insert a hook into the last stitch that we have into our side seam. We are going to pull our yarn through, do a chain up of one to secure, and start with a single crochet row, putting one single crochet into every side row. So let's just do the first few. This is my first side row right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert my hook in through there. And if you're like me, you should have a few tail ends. Go ahead and place those over your hook if you don't want to weave them in later. And then single crochet around everything. Let's do the next single crochet. This is my following side row, which is this divot. Insert into that top loop and single crochet. And that's pretty much it for this. Continue with one single crochet into every side row, one single crochet into every stitch, and then one single crochet into every chain, making our way all the way up and over. Then finish off this single crochet row and slip stitch into that chain space. Once we made our way all the way down, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, the last thing we're going to do is start working on our ruffles. So first things first, we're all going to want to insert a stitch marker right where we want our ruffles to start. Now this is going to be completely up to you. You guys can insert your ruffle along the top, not at all, because this is cute as a tank top as well, or you can have it right at the edge of the strap, in the middle, honestly, wherever you guys want. You just want to make sure that it's even within the front and the back panel so that it doesn't look a little wonky, and then repeat the same thing on the other side. So what I did was inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch from the tail end for my armhole within the front and the back and on the other side. Now we're going to get started with our ruffle, so we're all going to insert our hook into our stitch marker stitch. We're all going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now that chain of one does not count as a stitch, we just need to secure it in. And now we're all going to start with one single crochet and one half double crochet. So into that same stitch that our chain one was in, insert with a single crochet, and then into that following stitch, a half double crochet. Now from here, we're all going to be putting two double crochets into every stitch until we have one stitch left right before our next stitch marker. So just do the first one, we're all gonna yarn over. Into that following stitch with one double crochet, and then into that same stitch, another double crochet. And I'll meet you back when we have one stitch left. So we are back, we have made our way all the way up and over, and we should all have one stitch left right before a stitch marker. Now we're going to close off this row with a half double crochet and then single crochet to make this edge nice and smooth. So yarn over, into that last stitch with one half double crochet, and then into that stitch marker stitch with one single crochet. Now from here, let's get started on our following row. So let's all chain one and flip our work. Now getting started on the following row, we're always going to start with three single crochets. Now the three single crochets aren't technically going to count as a stitch for our following row. We just need to work our way in just a little bit with smaller stitches to get a smooth curve along the edges again. So into that first stitch with one single, into that next stitch with a second single, and then into that following with another single crochet. Now from here, we're all going to get started now from here, we are all going to do a decrease of three double crochets. So right after that last third single crochet, we're going to chain one. That chain one will not count as a stitch, that just helps us give the height for the double crochets. Then we're all going to yarn over. Into that following stitch, insert, pull through. Into the stitch after that, pull through, and then into the stitch after that as well, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then from here, yarn over pull through the first four loops, then yarn over, pull through all five. And now that that decrease is finished, we're all going to make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into the top of that decrease stitch. Now the stitch marker stitch is technically the first stitch of this row. Now from here, we're going to be putting one double crochet into every stitch until we all have six stitches left. So we've made our way all the way down and we should all have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches left. Now what we're all going to do is do a decrease of three double crochets. So yarn over into that sixth to last stitch, pull through into the fifth to last, 
pull through and into that fourth to last, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first four, yarn over, pull through two. And from here, we're going to get started on the following row. We're going to be leaving those last three stitches. So chain one and flip our work. Now for the rest of the rows, it's going to be a repeat of our previous row. So we're just going to get the following one started. Let's start by putting one single crochet into the next three stitches. When we have our three single crochets, we're all going to chain one and then do a decrease of three double crochets again. So yarn over, in that following stitch, pull through, following stitch, pull through, stitch right after that, pull through for five loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, pull through two. Now we always want to make sure that we're inserting a stitch marker into the top of that decrease stitch so that now this is technically the first stitch of the row. Now from here, put one double crochet into every stitch until we all have six stitches left or until we have five stitches left right before our stitch marker. We are back and we made our way all the way down until we had one, two, three, four, five stitches left right before our stitch marker. Now from here, we're going to close off this row with a decrease of three double crochets. So yarn over into that following stitch, pull through, stitch after that, pull through, stitch after that, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, yarn over, pull through two, and this is the end of the row. Now from here, we're going to continue to repeat this row until we get the total length of this sleeve detail that we would like. And when we have that, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our ruffle detail on both sides. I did a total of nine rows and we are all done. Last thing we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.